Once upon a time, there was a small but busy harbour that was run by several engines. These engines were very different from what engines usually look like. They were made of wood, had box-like shapes, and had metal plates covering their wheels. They were known as tram engines. One of these engines was called Toby. He was among the younger engines at the harbour, but had grown popular with the crews and workers. He had a big heart, was kind to everyone, and kept the trucks in order. He was a joy to be around. Unfortunately, there was another tram engine that could be seen as quite the opposite. His name was Roger. He was much older than Toby, yet somehow far less mature. Always rude and impatient, and showed very little respect to anyone. Furthermore, he had a very large ego, always bragging about his apparent strength, and that no one was as reliable as him. Just how an engine with such an attitude came to be, no one will ever know. One day, Toby had returned from the quay after leaving some vans near a ship to be loaded. He was looking forward to a peaceful rest in the shed, only to groan in dismay as he could hear the familiar, angry shouting of Roger. It would seem he was becoming rather heated with someone. That someone, as Toby found out, was a very peculiar looking coach. She had brown paintwork and had two balconies at both ends. Toby had never seen a coach quite like this, but this wasn't the time to dwell on it. If I'm to run that line, I want a proper coach. Something like you would only ruin my image. Bold of you to assume the line would want such a grubby, selfish brat heading the trains. Selfish? Is wanting to be the best and a hard worker selfish? I know this harbour and its track more than any other engine. What more do I need to give? Some basic manners for a start. Toby chuffed alongside Roger, wishing angrily. You claim to be a hard worker, yet here you are throwing insults at a newcomer. Unbelievable. I was merely telling this wretched thing that- I don't want to hear it. I'll be off with you. Those stone trucks that just came in need to be by the key now. And you know full well that that's your responsibility. Roger gritted his teeth, but said no more, as he puffed furiously away. I'm terribly sorry about him. He's been a bad apple in the arbor for years now. Oh, that's all right. Thank you for sticking up for me. What is your name? Oh, my name's Toby. And you are? Henrietta. It's nice to meet you, Toby. A warm smile appeared on Toby's face. He could tell Henrietta was a pleasant sort, and he forgot to be cross. What brings you here, Henrietta? We don't usually have coaches around the harbour. Oh, I've just been moved here to act as a works coach for a while. There's a tramway being constructed not far from here. I'm going to be its primary coach. Oh, I know what you mean. Some of the workmen once brought it up here. Must be quite an honour. Oh, indeed. It's a lovely line, too. I was shown pictures of it when I was being built. Cozy little villages, lots of farms. Oh, I can't wait to go there. They say it will open in about a week, I think. So not long now. The only thing, though, is that it hasn't been decided who will run the line. I recall hearing an engine from this harbour will be selected, but I don't know who. Oh, let me guess. Roger thinks you'll be selected. Exactly. But he doesn't want me on the line. Very disgraceful, if you ask me. Toby couldn't agree more. The days went by and Roger's behaviour got worse. Every chance he got, he would brag on and on about how he was the only one worthy to run the tramway. The other tram engines ignored him, of course, as they always did. But Roger didn't seem to notice, or care. Perhaps if he had a better attitude, or wasn't so careless, that tramway might have been his. On one very fateful day, 
The harbour master was called to inspect one of the cranes. She seemed to have some mechanical issues. She could still be operated and do the work required, but all the same, certain precautions would have to be put in place. The harbour master addressed the engines. I have arranged for the crane to be repaired within the next few days. Until then, unless you're required to do so, keep a good distance from her, just in case. The engines understood the dangers and listened carefully, all except Roger. Toby looked over to him as the harbour master left. Were you paying attention, Roger? Keep a distance from that crane! Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm doing. With that grumpy response given, Roger huffed away. The morning and afternoon were uneventful. But it was when evening approached that trouble arose. A ship came into port, and among its cargo was a large heavy crate. The crane set to work, lifting the crate from the ship and slowly turned around to lower it onto the quay. Then it happened. The crane jolted and stuttered. It struggled to gain control. A workman shouted a warning, and every person and engine ensured they were at a safe distance. Suddenly, Round a corner came Roger, pulling some empty trucks and approaching the line next to the grain. He paid no attention to the danger above. Roger, what are you doing? Get out of there! What are you on about? Can't you see I'm busy? Then Roger stopped and looked up. The crate was directly above him. Realising the danger, both driver and fireman jumped out of the cab and ran as far away as possible. They were just in time. As the crane arm lost control, and the crate shot down. An awful sound echoed across the harbour, and once it faded, nothing but silence. All the engines and workmen stared in horror at the sight that was Roger. The crate had fallen apart, and its contents were scattered everywhere. But as for Roger himself, his roof bent downwards, the wood on his side splintered, and the entire inside of his body was crushed. It took several hours to clear up the mess, and by night time, Roger was pushed into the shed. The harbour master stared at the wrecked engine. Can he be repaired, sir? That, Toby, doesn't matter, because I have no intent on wasting my money on him. That was all he said, while giving Roger a cold look. Roger didn't respond. He couldn't respond in any way. With his boiler completely destroyed, there was very little life within him. A few more days passed. Roger was left at the back of an old goods shed. No one came near him. But then, one day, Toby saw some workmen walk by him, carrying various equipment. Hammers, wires, and what looked like gas torches. Before he could dwell on it, the harbour master approached him. Toby, I have some splendid news for you. I'm sure you've heard of the tramway being built close by. Yes, sir. Well, the line will be completed tomorrow, and the manager is still looking for an engine. However, after a viewing of the work here, we both agree that you, Toby, are the perfect fit for the line. Toby's eyes widened. Sir, sir, you, you mean? Indeed, Toby. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Toby. I will be more than happy to work alongside you. So, later that day, with clean paintwork and brass shining like gold, Toby puffed out of the harbour with his faithful coach behind him. The other tram engines rang their bells with pride. They knew they would miss him, but they were happy for him. As Toby passed the good shed, he couldn't help but notice a flat truck standing outside. Upon it laid a jumbled pile of objects, wooden planks, cow catches, side plates and various other parts that once belonged to an engine. Toby couldn't help but sigh. 
He did try to warn Roger, but he let his arrogance and incompetence get the better of him. <laughs>